this apparently was um this apparently was um uh, sort of reported i guess in like right wing circles prior to this because somebody had a source at the daily wire um <laughs> this is uh, from that uh, censored man uh, uh twitter handle which i think is this like right wing news or yeah. something and this came out like i guess like a couple months ago or i don't know maybe in march um and four Daily Wire employees, all Christians, have approached me. Their identities remain anonymous. <laughs> and leaked information about an impromptu town hall that Jeremy Boring, who's the CEO of uh, the Daily Wire, hosted on the day of Candace Owens firing. Um, the town hall was led by boring with andrew clavin repeating many of the corporate talking points on a show next day we're gonna show this uh, clavin guy uh the four employees told me that the town hall attempted to quote all in caps brainwash the employees present into believing that candace was in fact an anti-semite they view it as an extreme form of damage control to scare and prevent employees from speaking out against owens firing later that day the feeling is they didn't just want her gone they wanted everyone to hate her like ben does it was straight up propaganda. These subjects were brought up during the town hall. Candace's repeated use of Christ is King was deemed anti-Semitic, dating back to November when a meeting with Ben Shapiro was leaked. In the meeting, he badmouthed Owens for not being overtly pro-Israel. A clip of Nick Fuentes chanting Christ is King was played. A clip from Owens on Fresh and Fit was played where a ka sound effect was heard in the background. This was an attempt to associate her with the stereotype that Jews love money. I don't know what fresh and fit is. Um, the, they had they were on Tim Pool. I can't remember what. Or Tim Pool's like, you guys are alpha guys. Yeah, don't worry about it. Supposedly, some employees are planning a lawsuit against the Daily Wire. Mm. Feeling intimidated and threatened by the meeting, they also because of what they believe is an attack on Christianity at the company. Yeah, well, sounds now, pretty serious. Now, I don't know if this stuff is happening there or not. It's just like, this is the milieu in which they are dealing with. And here is that guy. Um, where did this guy ever come from? I mean, I know he's been around. At Some the slime pit. Andrew Clavin. <laughs> like, what was... Was what uh, what he looks like? He crawled out of some radioactive. He's a waste. nasty piece of work. I remember. I, I'll try to look up some of his history, but I just know him as very unpleasant, even for Daily Wire standards. Here he goes. My my interactions with Candace were all in the makeup room and were always incredibly friendly. I spotted her as a huge talent years before she took off. I mean, I saw her on YouTube when. She had no followers, virtually she had a small following. I just thought that's one of the most talented broadcasters I've ever seen. I had her on my show. I, I told the Daily Wire to hire her, which they didn't, which cost them a lot of money because when they hired her later. So I don't have any, you know, feelings about her whatsoever. And it's not a personal thing. And it's also not even, I don't even know her heart or what she's, what's in her mind. So I, I'm not attacking her at all. But there were things going out over our air that she was saying that were being at least received, I have to say, as being deeply anti-Semitic. So that Nick Fuentes, who is a virtual Nazi, I mean, mm. there's, no, there's no space between him and what a Nazi would be saying, was praising her to the skies. If Nick Fuentes praises me to the skies, I go out and say, no, I'm not on your side. I don't know. I don't know what you mistook. But, but there was nothing coming back. And so it was becoming uncomfortable to be on the same, you know, uh, station, the same venue where that stuff was, was coming out. And so without ever having any kind of personal animus toward uh, Candace or even knowing what it was she intended, you know, I'm not even saying that that was, you know, what, what she, how she intended it to be received, it simply became impossible to have a good feeling about this place that I helped build and that I love very much and that I, I, I'm very proud of, you know, as a, an entity. And uh, it was very painful to have that kind of stuff coming out over the air. And I did not want Nick Fuentes. I don't want Nick Fuentes' praise. I don't even want, uh, you know, I don't want him to have a happy day because of anything that I said. And so, um, and so that, was, that was my basic reaction. And in Pause that... for a second. I, was, Matt, will you just help remind me of this um 
I get the idea that like, yeah, maybe you got to just look into yourself and see like, if we're getting praise from Nick Fuentes, uh, a Nazi, maybe there's something going on that seems a little problematic. Because yeah, Fuentes is a, I think a self-avowed Nazi or uh, yeah, I'm not white sure. supremacist. He's saying J.D. Vance. Vance most recently said J.D. Vance can't be trusted as VP because he uh, married a non-white person. Oh, <laughs> and, so, yeah. um, um, now putting aside Nick Fuentes's pre- uh, hypocrisy in some areas, like I know he's very homophobic or spouts homophobic things. Right. I mean, you know. Hypocrisy is not, uh, you know, people don't get too riled about that, but that's not my point. My point is, do you remember uh, that time where uh, Ben Shapiro said, I need to step back and look at myself in the mirror about what I'm saying, because um, what I have said in the past was lauded by someone who went on a killing spree uh, in Canada. I mean, yeah. am I, do you remember that, that the segment where uh, Ben Shapiro did that? Yeah, I don't remember that. That might be on the now paywalled uh, list of things that he apologizes for, but I don't remember seeing it on there. I actually, I'm pretty sure that and, it wasn't and, added and, later. And what either. was that? He inspired a um, uh, uh, mosque shooter. It was um, a mosque shooter. Interesting. And I remember when he. Oh no! Wait, maybe I'm making that up. You he might never be. actually came out and said, "Hey, it's funny. Maybe it's just this guy Clavin has a." Um, yeah, Quebec City, Alexander Bissonnette obsessively checked uh, in on the Twitter account of one uh, Ben Shapiro. Interesting. You know what this he had feels... a good day uh, because of some Ben Shapiro tweets, it seemed like. You know what this feels like to me is uh, Andrew Clavin, I would say, of the main Daily Wire hosts here, is not necessarily the most well-known, not as well-known as Matt Walsh, not as well-known as Michael Knowles. And boss Ben Shapiro is very angry at Candace Owens. So this is a good opportunity for him to get two warm bodies in front of him who just stare blankly back as he talks to them um, to suck up to the boss publicly and basically be like, hey, I'm on your side here about this Candace stuff. That's what it feels like to me. Yeah. I wonder if he doesn't have like a piece in the company, too. That might be it. Because I think Knowles is probably the one to keep an eye on that's the most close to Candace Owens also. Um, Ideologically. So, and like personal friendship wise like went to her wedding i believe in the uk and mm. stuff like that so interesting something to watch is there any more that's uh worth this sure and so um and so that was that was my basic reaction and in that was involved this, the fact that some of this was being phrased in religious terms and one of the ways this was happening was the phrase Christ is King was being used as an anti-Semitic trope. Now, as I said repeatedly on the show, as Jeremy Boring who runs the Daily Wire said repeatedly, we believe this. We believe that Christ is King. I also believe in the cross of Christ. But if you burn the cross on somebody's lawn, it's no longer the cross of Christ. It's just a, a vehicle, a symbol of your toxic hatred. And so the way it was being used online as as an attack on Jews, you know, was was simply worth refuting. And that got me some heat from people who felt like, what are, what are you what are you talking about? This is a totally innocent phrase. So th- there was a lot of blowback from it. And I don't know why no one else addressed it. I thought it was important to address it. I'd do it again. Um, no one asked me to address it. You know, I mean, well, we're asking you now. And there's yeah. something I wanted yeah. to, to ask you about, Andrew, which is, there is a kind of alternative theory that I've heard from various people, which is that anti-Semitism aside, really, Candace, as you say, is a very talented broadcaster. She looks fantastic on screen. She's very charismatic. She's great at communicating. Uh, And when the Daily Wire hired her, it was the right moment in which she was able to communicate, you know, let's be honest, the ideas of people like Thomas Sowell and Larry Elder to a younger, different audience. All the black guys. That was great. But then other issues started to come along and became the current thing, as they say, on the Internet, whether that was the war in Ukraine, then Israel, Palestine. And then it was kind of the case that she didn't really know what she was talking about. Uh, You know, she wasn't covering those issues in a way that is serious, you know, speaking plainly. That's what some people have said to me. Um, oh, pause. Let me it, let me just um, let me just tell you in terms of my experience. I don't know any. Hey, I have no direct knowledge of any of this. I don't even know who these guys are. They're the the trigon, trigon, trigonometry mm-hmm. guys, or whatever. But 
that Sugar guy nuts. doing the, some have said, <laughs> I'm familiar with Candace Owens' work, and to say that she was knowledgeable about something five years ago, when incidentally she was, as far as I remember, it was, you know, Hitler had the nationalism part right. Yeah. Um, that somehow she is operating in territory she knows nothing about. That has been what she's done all along. This guy is, there is a, it's so fascinating to see the way these guys' business uh, plans operate yeah. in, uh, you know, where they're going to ally themselves. And um, this guy, um, uh, Clavin, is obviously the guy sent out because he is the sort of like uh -huh. lowest key of them. He is the one who's out there to distribute the talking points from uh, the, the corporate headquarters, Daily Wire. And obviously these uh, trigonometry guys, uh, they're on board with this as well. It's fascinating. Just a little color for Andrew Clavin. This is something he wrote about uh, a period in, or it said about being in Memphis. I wanted to see jazz clubs and I was told in my hotel you can't go there at night. And I said, well, who's going to a jazz club during the day? And I took a walk there to see the area where the jazz clubs were and I was afraid. I was afraid for my safety. A lot of like lurking, you know, sullen, baleful, thuggish people, ah. all of whom were black. And I think all of us know that there are many, many neighborhoods and urban cities and urban areas with that are black neighborhoods that are bad. They are bad neighborhoods, and many of these neighborhoods are dangerous. And there, there's a whole subculture, you know, because of a lot of black people, thank heavens, have moved out of that subculture. But there's a subculture of places where uh, that where you don't want to be because they're black. So that's Andrew Clark. And I, I, they, they basically are just saying she outlived her usefulness. I mean, that's yes. like the reading between the lines We're script. there. Well, but they're and, trying to make it like it's a, exactly. Well, 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 and she's the only female host, and the condescension there, like, uh, uh, they're only female hosts, right? At the Daily Wire, she's I mean, there. Brett Cooper. Okay. Well, of the no, main, they got, they got the um, uh, Ben Shapiro, uh, uh, the club. little the, the fake but, streamer lady. But the point is just like that is. I mean, she just wasn't very serious. She wasn't covering the, this in a way that was serious and intellectual, like the other guys, you know, smoking their cigars in uh, in the man cave, as if like Ben Shapiro burning Barbies on his channel is supposedly really serious, or Michael Knowles, or Matt Walsh with his "What Is a Woman" thing. They're all idiots or like pr promoting really dumb pseudo intellectualism it's just that they can cast her aside now i think polybius would want us to support israel so. <laughs> speaking plainly that's what some people have said to me um and then it descended into you know Br uh, bridget macron as a man and and before you know it you know the israel is a discriminatory because there's a muslim quarter in jerusalem well, and you just go is this person really qualified to be commenting on these issues was it that or oh, was as it opposed to michael knowles no it was for me it was the stuff it was the stuff that was being taken as anti-semitic i mean the, she had been saying stuff that i had i've said on the air i don't think is true like the moon landing was fake and uh <laughs> what was the other one um, I, can't, I can't remember, but the Macron one is a perfect example just of things that I just thought, uh, oh, 9-11, she was hinting, was kind of an inside job. And th these things don't make sense. I've actually researched the ones about the moon and 9-11 uh, only because they were so prevalent. And they don't make sense to me. But at the same time, I don't feel uncomfortable that someone that I'm not connected to is saying those things on the air. But when you start saying things that you know, they're on the borderline. There was always a way, there's always a way of dodging out of these things, you know. I, oh, I was just asking questions, or I was just saying, I was just expressing the fact, my the feeling that Christ is king. Even if you're dodging them, it seems to me that you would want to make sure that people don't mistake what you're saying uh, for this hatred that has certainly done, in my opinion, just about enough damage, I think. We, we've had just enough about enough anti-Semitism as we need. I think the anti-Semitism <laughs> is just about topped off, you know? Well, there's plenty of people who disagree with you, Andrew. I'm going to be honest with you. Exactly so. To me, my supply of anti-Semitism is just well <laughs> overdone, yeah. you know? And I think that uh, I'm ready to move on to some, like, obscure group that we can hate uh, without meaning anything. Trans but, people? Yeah, uh, exactly. That was the thing Bingo. that just made me uncomfortable. So boring. Wow. <laughs> Again, another failed entertainer i think he wanted to be a novelist no yeah according to his wikipedia page he was like a crime novelist in the 1970s 
Um, and some of his work was adapted into like you know lesser known like Clint Eastwood and Michael uh, Douglas uh, pictures at mm. one point. There you go. So yeah, maybe you still don't know who he is. And perhaps yeah, and perhaps even the, even with that an- an anonymity, still he's probably still more successful in that regard than Ben Shapiro or oh, uh, Michael Knowles were in their uh, you know c- cultural careers. <laughs> Hey, folks, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and check out our daily show. We do it every day at 12 p.m. Eastern for about two and a half hours. We even take phone calls. You should check that out.